All right, so see something, say something, reporting abuse. So this is kind of a heavy duty topic we got going on here. So what is domestic violence, abuse, and neglect of disabled people? So even though I am sharing this um, with a specific category of disabled people, it can apply, a lot of this information can apply to anybody. It can apply to children. It can apply to other people that you know, um, whether they're your neighbors or somebody that you work with or a family member. So um, even though this is directed towards uh, the domestic or disabled population, it can really, we can use this information for anybody. So abuse can be from a partner, um, such as your husband or wife, boyfriend or girlfriend. It can be from a family member or support person. Um, so if you have caretakers or somebody that comes in, a nurse or a physical therapist that comes in and helps you, um, carriers, staff, and others. So it can happen at work. Um, both men and women can be targets of violence. However, the majority of victims are women. Abuse can be unintentional caused by poor practice or neglect, such as forgetting to pick up medication or not providing adequate care, leaving a person alone for long periods of time or not providing meals. Um, so maybe somebody unintentionally forgot to pick up your medication or they lost track of time and got stuck at work and didn't come home and feed you when you weren't able to feed yourself. But a lot of times it's intentional. Intentional means it's on purpose. They're doing it on purpose. So they're doing something to hurt, frighten, or upset you or somebody else. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the next slide. So this is a questionnaire I pulled off uh, one of the abuse websites um, for people with developmental disabilities. It says, are you at risk for being abused? So ask yourself the following questions. Um, do you have someone in your life who may take advantage of you because you're in a vulnerable situation? So if you don't live on your own, if you live with a caretaker or family, um, you know, that can put you at risk for abuse. It doesn't mean you're getting abused. It just means you could be at risk. Are you isolated from other people? Perhaps you don't have proper care or you're not involved in the community. So right now, a lot of us are isolated, right? Um, many of us are at home um, because of the coronavirus and everything that's going on. So you are a little bit isolated, especially if you're staying at home very frequently. You don't have that chance to interact with people in your community. So that's why it's really important to stay involved with the staff members that call you on a regular basis and to participate in these Zoom meetings because it gives you a chance to connect with other people outside of your home, which will help you to um, not get depressed from being home alone, but it'll also give you a chance to talk to people about any concerns you might have. So um, do you rely on other people to provide things like food, shelter, and personal care? So um, if you rely on somebody in your household to make your, your meals for you, or that you don't live on your own, you live with somebody else, or you do receive personal care for somebody who's maybe um, providing you with your medication, uh, this can put you at risk. It doesn't mean that you are being abused, it just puts you at risk of being abused. Um, so do you personally, do you know people with negative attitudes towards people with disabilities? So let's say you have a, a cousin or your brother has a friend that um, makes negative comments you know, about people that have disabilities. They might call them names or make um, negative remarks or call you names. Um, that puts you at risk of being abused. So um, if you've answered yes to one or more of these questions, you are vulnerable and may be at risk. So it doesn't mean you are being abused, but you have to be mindful that these different situations, and for many of us, you don't have to be a person with disabilities to be at risk. A lot of us, you know, um, uh, ha live with roommates or live with our husbands and wives or live with family members and we rely on each other to take care of one another. So um, this can apply to, to a lot of people.
<clears throat> so abuse comes in many forms. So uh, I saw there's like all these different pictures and this one made me really sad. Um, and um, some of you might have even experienced this in your lifetime, which also makes me very sad. Um, where somebody might call you stupid or weird or different. Um, um, my son, he has uh, ADHD and he's been picked on at school by other kids who have called him names and because he is different and that's not okay. That's not right. And a lot of times people do that because they just haven't been properly educated or sometimes people just don't understand what it's like to be around people who are different and how cool that is. You know, if we were all the same, that would be very boring. Um, I think it's awesome to be around people that are different and that have different ideas and different ways of thinking. It makes life so much more fun and exciting. So sometimes those people that make fun of people who are different, they just, you know, <clears throat> they um, just might not be ignorant or not know uh, what it's like to be around people that are different, or maybe they were picked on and in, in return, they pick on other people because of it. So here's the different types of abuse. I'm just going to go over them uh, quickly here, and then we'll go over them a little more in depth later. <clears throat> so emotional or verbal abuse. So these are non-physical behaviors. Um, so there are people making threats or insulting you or screaming at you. Um, um, they're uh, constantly watching you or they're putting you in, in isolation away from other people. So um, some examples of this, like in the picture, you know, somebody calls you stupid or dumb or they, you know, keep you away from other people um, or they scream at you. So let's say you accidentally spill your cup of water or something at, at dinner and they just go off and start yelling and screaming at you. That's not okay. You know, um, it's, you know, we all make mistakes. We all have accidents. Um, and people shouldn't be uh, getting over the top as a result of it. <clears throat> Another one, which um, is probably a little more obvious is physical abuse. So if they are punching you, hitting you, pinching you, shoving you, um, you know, doing anything like that, that's, that's not appropriate either. Um, you know, like this person in the wheelchair, if, if you're in a wheelchair and they're jerking you around and making you scared and feel unsafe, that's not appropriate either. Um, financial abuse. So let's say you get a, a birthday card from grandma and she gives you a nice new crisp $50 bill. And then your cousin comes over and he sees that you got that $50. And he says, hey, can I borrow that $50 from you? And you're being nice. And you're like, okay. And then he never pays you back. And you notice he does that frequently. That's um, financial abuse, right? Or if they're withholding your money, um, you know, and not letting you touch it ever, you know, I mean, there's a difference if, you know, with my kids, I encourage them to set up a savings account and spend their money wisely. I'm not going to let them just spend their money all on candy and video games um, because they might need to spend that money on other stuff. So let's say you need to spend your money on your phone bill, but you really want to spend it on a brand new movie. Um, your caretaker might remind you, hey, we're saving that money up so you can pay your phone bill. You can't afford the movie right now. So that's not necessary. That's not financial abuse. They're just trying to help you be financially responsible. But in situations where the cousin's just flat out taking the money from you, or you know you're getting paid for something and you never received, you know, maybe you're, there's money coming in to make sure that you are getting clothed, uh, getting new clothes once in a while, and that you're being fed well. And instead of getting new clothes once in a while and getting fed well, you're getting fed top ramen noodles all the time. And you're wearing clothes that are holy and stained and yucky. Um, that's an example of financial, financial abuse. If somebody's getting paid to take care of you and they're not taking care of you, um, that's a form of financial abuse and also neglect. Um, stalking, being reported, repeatedly watched, followed, or monitored, or harassed. 
Um, this can happen online. Um, we see this a lot where people start stalking people online. It oftentimes happens to celebrities. Um, you know, if, and we can go further into that. That one's kind of something that we might not experience quite as often, but if you do feel like somebody's stalking you, let's say there's somebody that you know, a friend from work, and they're constantly calling you, they're constantly on your Facebook making comments and saying inappropriate things, or they're texting you inappropriate things, or you see them driving around your house, then that's a form of stalking. That's not okay. Um, so sexual abuse is another type of abuse. Um, if somebody is you know, touching you inappropriately or saying anything that makes you feel yucky or gross. They're saying stuff that you know is not um, uh, appropriate. You know, hey, you look really sexy in that outfit and, you know, let me touch your butt. That's not okay. Okay. So, and this is when it's unconsensual. That means it's not something that, you know, you want to happen. That's not okay. You need to let somebody know about that. And then digital abuse. So we see this a lot happening to teens right now. And it's very, very sad, um, but it can happen on your Facebook account. It, it can text you where people are bullying you. They're saying mean, nasty things. Um, they say that, you know, um, you're a hor horrible person or they don't like you or they don't want to be your friend or they make up lies and they post it on your social media account. That is also a form of abuse. So we're going to move forward to the next slide. And we're going to also discuss what about your peers? What about your friends, your neighbors, your family members? So we discussed um, how you might be at risk. We discussed the types of abuse. And now we're going to discuss how you can see if people around you um, might be displaying that uh, signs that they're being abused. So um, you might see a change in behavior, emotional state. So let's say you have a friend, you guys talk on the phone at least twice a week and you know that they're stuck at home and they're um, living with family members, they've moved in with family members that they don't know really well. And now all of a sudden they don't want to talk on the phone anymore, you know, or when they do, they're very sad or nervous or they get agitated or angry um, and they just seem different. That, that can be a sign that maybe something not so good is happening in their lives. So um, let's say, you know, you have a friend that comes over and they are covered with bruises. So we can look in the picture, you know, they have bruises on their hands or a burn mark or a cut. And you say, hey, what happened? You know, and maybe you say, oh, you know, I got in a horrible car accident. It was awful. Da, 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 da. Okay. Or so then they probably did. Or they might say, uh, uh, well, I... What, I don't know. I, I don't know how it happened. That is a sign that something might have happened to them that is not okay. If they're um, can't, they don't feel like they can share it with you, right? Um, it just seems something is off. So um, poor hygiene. So let's say you see your friend and usually they look great. You know, they have nice clothes on and their hair looks good. And now all of a sudden you notice every time you see them, they're in the same exact outfit and their hair looks, you know, ratty or dirty. Um, that could be an indication that they're being neglected or not taken care of. Um, somebody's suddenly losing a lot of weight or seem very dehydrated, like um, their lips are really chapped and their skin's really dry. Um, and you know that they're not sick. Um, it be, could be an indication that they aren't getting fed well enough. Um, they lack food and necessities at home, like toilet paper, water, et cetera. So you're talking to somebody and they're saying, you know, they're really hungry and their power got turned off and, you know, they've been out of toilet paper for a week. That's a sign of abuse as well. Or let's say you know somebody and all of a sudden they start doing, uh, drinking a lot of alcohol or start doing drugs out of nowhere. Um, there might be a reason why. Maybe they're experiencing abuse in their life and they're trying to dull the pain through drugs and alcohol. So reporting abuse. So there's the important part. So we're going to go back a couple slides. So if you yourself or anyone you know, you believe they might be experiencing any form of abuse. So you think 
that they're experiencing or you yourself are experiencing emotional or verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse, stalking, or digital abuse, you are going to want to first know the warning signs. So we discussed that they might not want to be around people. Their personalities might be different. They might be, um, you know, wearing dirty clothes or losing weight. Um, so first, if you suspect they might be having abuse, uh, look at what's going on in their life, how they're behaving, ask questions. You know, are you doing okay? Are you getting uh, enough to eat? Um, and sometimes you might not be, maybe they won't give you any answers. So the best thing you can do is to say something. So you suspect your aunt or your cousin or your friend is experiencing abuse then tell your caretaker or your parent, let them know, Hey, uh, my friend, Jill, she, she hasn't been really wanting to talk on the phone. And when I see her, you know, she looks really sad and she wears the same clothes all the time. And it looks like she has some bruises on her arm. I think somebody's abusing her, right? Or let's say it's you that feels like you're being abused and maybe you can't go to your caretaker. Then let a staff person know when somebody from Desert Haven calls, um, let that staff person know or supervisor um, here at Desert Haven or talk to your regional worker. Um, and if anything, if you feel like your life is being threatened, call 911 or call the police, just inform somebody, hey, I think I might be abused at the moment. This is what's happening. Um, you know, this person hit me or this person has been screaming, yelling, and saying, calling me terrible things like all the time, or I know somebody and they just seem different. You know, they seem like they're, they don't seem like themselves. I know they moved into a new home and I feel like maybe they're being abused. Just let somebody know so it can be um, looked into, right? Uh, abuse, neglect, and exploitation can happen to anybody. So it doesn't just happen to adults with developmental disabilities. However, they show that they are at a higher risk of being abused than other people, but it can really happen to anybody. So we can be more effectively, uh, we can more effectively prevent and address um, these abuses by educating ourselves and others and building a stronger community of support to promote the health well-being and independence of older adults and individuals with disabilities. So on here, this came from a website, it takes a, a village. So that's why it's really important, especially during this time when so many of us are isolated and at home alone, that we stay in contact with each other over the phone, over social media, over Zoom meetings, so we can connect and make sure that we're all doing okay. So on this last slide, it says, be an advocate. Um, empower, uh, it's an empowerment wealth for people with disabilities. I found this on one website and I thought it was really, really cool. So I'm going to post this on Facebook and I'm probably going to have Lorraine send it out in one of her packets, but it says the power and control of your safety and your life, uh, lie within this, this will here. So, um, know your boundaries. Um, you can control your, uh, care, health, medicine, sexuality, and safety, um, you decide who touches you and how. So um, own your own body. Don't let people, um, you know, touch you if they shouldn't be touching you, right? Or, or touch you in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, be assertive. So tell people uh, how you want to be treated. If somebody's sitting there calling you names and telling you um, things that are negative, then say, hey, that's not okay. Um, I don't appreciate you saying that. So um, also watch out for fraud. You know, if somebody says, hey, can I borrow that 50 bucks from you? No, you can't because you've borrowed money from me in the past and you haven't paid me back. I will not let you borrow this money. Uh, be in charge. You decide uh, your needs, your possessions and personal assistance, activities, communication and money. Um, so just be in charge of your stuff. Again, don't let people walk all over you. Hey, I really like your jacket. And then they take your jacket. That's not okay. Um, you know, speak up for yourself. Uh, tell somebody. So if people are trying to take advantage of you, abusing you, or being mean to you, make sure you let somebody know so it can be handled. I like this part. It says, you are strong. If you get abused, don't give up. 
Don't blame yourself. You can recover and live a good life. So if somebody is abusing you, oftentimes we think it's our fault. You know, if somebody's telling us that we're dumb or we're stupid or we're annoying or that they wish we were around, um, it's not our fault. You know, it's, it's nice people don't say stuff like that. Um, they have the problem. You don't have the problem. So don't beat yourself up. Um, I'm running out of time before we talk about questions. So go through the next ones real quick. Connect with people. So again, right now, you know, connect with your friends, um, connect with your family members, connect with us here at Desert Haven, um, you know, through the Zooms and through uh, talking on the phone and FaceTime and Facebook. Uh, know your rights. So you have a lot of rights. And if you're not sure what those are, talk to your staff person, talk to your regional worker so they can let you know what your rights are. And um, be a leader, so use your skills and experience. So let's say you're talking to somebody in program that is currently not connected, right? They don't have a Facebook account, they don't know how to get on Zoom, and they're sad and they're lonely. Reach out to them. Say, hey, you know what? If you want help getting onto these things, we'll connect you with somebody that will. I am more than willing to help people learn how to get onto Zoom so they can connect with us. So they're not um, you know, alone and, and, and not able to connect with us as a community. And then you are important. So remember, you are important. Um, get the best help and learning that these skills are worth the effort. So just remember, we're all unique, special individuals. We all have different gifts and we all have the ability to bring a smile to somebody's face. So don't forget that. If somebody's making you feel like you're not special and you're not important, then that person is not a good person for you to be around. So um, just make sure that you are with people, you have friends and people that you can connect with that will let you know that you're special and you're important.